All right, so I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been in a situation where you found yourself so frightened that you just froze up? Oftentimes, just before impact of a car accident, people find their bodies go rigid, their muscles tense. This is a reflex to help protect a person's joints or other vulnerable areas of their body against a sudden movement or an impact. Well, for protection against predators, some animals not only freeze up, but they play dead. Opossums are known for this ability to play dead when they're threatened. You know, they'll fall into this comatose-like state, which can last several minutes to several hours. Even when touched, will continue to play their part. Well, the Virginia opossum takes it a step further and even opens its mouth with its tongue hanging out to simulate its death. There's actually a vast number of species who use this ability or this protective mechanism, but my favorite by far is the fainting goat. When it's threatened or startled, the result is a genetic condition called myotonia, which causes the goat's muscles to lock up, often leading to it falling over, which appears to be fainting or playing dead. And I thought it'd be unfair for those who haven't seen a fainting goat, so I have a couple videos just to, to let you see this, this phenomenon. So none of these animals need to be raised from the dead because they're not actually dead. But this is not the case in our gospel reading. Lazarus was really dead, four days dead. But at least he still had flesh on his bones and his organs intact. Yet the experience the Lord gives Ezekiel, God shows that he can even breathe life into a valley of dead bones. Now we're talking dead, dead. The story of Lazarus in John 11 and the vision of the dry bones in Ezekiel 37 share this common theme of God's power to breathe life into death. Just as God breathed life into a valley of dry bones and brought hope to his people, Jesus breathed new life into Lazarus, bringing hope to his sisters and all who witnessed this miracle. Both stories showcase God's sovereignty and omnipotence over life and death, his ability to bring new life even in the most hopeless situations. The reality is the enemy wants more than anything for us to play dead, to freeze up. But this is not the survival instinct of Christ Jesus. This morning I want us to explore the significance of God's power to raise the dead and perhaps find the Lord breathing new life into us. A few years ago, I wrote a short reflection called My Perspective Through the Eyes of Ezekiel. The valley of dry bones, brittle, bleached, abandoned bones, it's a scene of mass destruction. The ground blanketed in white, not from snow. Bone upon bone stretches the horizon as far as the eye can see. My own eyes beg for sight of life, but none is found. Even what's left of trees could not withstand the feathery weight of a sparrow. So my eyes look, where are you, tiny sparrow? Where are you, God? But it proves difficult to even differentiate the grayness of the sky from the tormenting, tormenting terrain before me. With each step... Bones crack beneath my feet, opening cavities of calcium dust and casting chills upon my spine. What happened here? Could it ever happen again? Could this also be me? 
The passage we're reflecting on comes from Ezekiel 37, if you want to open your Bibles, beginning in verse 1. And it's a powerful vision that Ezekiel receives from the Lord, which he finds himself standing in this valley of dry and dead bones. These bones are a picture of the spiritual reality of God's people at the time. They were dead in their sins. They had lost all hope for any future. But in this vision... God gives Ezekiel a message of hope and a promise. He showed Ezekiel that no matter how dead, no matter how lifeless situations seem to be, he is able to breathe life into bones. God begins by leading Ezekiel on a tour around this valley. And he's taken aback by the number of bones lying on the surface, and he describes them as very dry, indicating that they've been there for quite some time. What's also very obvious is that these bones were unburied. This is a source of great horror for Ezekiel. Proper burial was of the utmost importance for the ancient Near Eastern cultures. To leave a body unburied was the final insult, ultimate degradation, because It meant that not only did it not honor those who were bereaved as like it is in today's world, but also the sake of the deceased also. To be unburied meant the perpetuation of suffering into the afterlife, a destiny fit for only the truly cursed. So these bones that are not just evidence of death, but a reality of a covenant curse. These bones proclaim that their owners had been victims of divine judgment. Now this scene is what was due to God's people. Yet we also see the God of grace that desires none to perish but to find true life. In verse 3 of chapter 37, And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. The Hebrew word for man is Adam, son of Adam, son of man, human. Can these bones live? Ezekiel is called what he is, a human. And any human that would suggest that these bones could have anything but death would be preposterous. There are situations which appear to be totally and absolutely hopeless to natural man. Yet what is impossible to man is possible with our supernatural God. And so Ezekiel answers him wisely, O Lord God, you know. And in verse 4 he says, Then he said to me, Prophecy over these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. You know the first problem, right? We have a lot of bones in our ears. Bones don't have ears. But that's human wisdom. God is about to demonstrate the power of his word to bring life. Think about it. Through his word, he spoke the world into creation. He breathed life into Adam. Ezekiel, tell these bones I can do anything because I am the Lord. Tell them to come to life. I mean, if I would have been there in the scene, I would have started jumping up and down and going, Preach! Come on! You got this, Ezekiel! I mean, but I wouldn't have had that kind of faith to really believe God could do this. I'd probably look at the reality, and I might be like, all right, Bones, if you want to get up. But Ezekiel has faith, and he believes. And so he says, so I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. You can imagine the decibel level as... Thousands of bones begin begin rattling and clashing as they come together bone to bone, looking for their mates, 
shifting, wrist looking for fingers, femurs, fibulas, tibias, radius, ulnas, tarsals, metatarsals, interlocking like a magnetic jigsaw puzzle. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. If a valley full of dry bones isn't bad enough, now you have a valley of corpses. They said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. It's important to understand the Hebrew word for breath, spirit, winds, is all the same word, ruach. It's used ten times in this Ezekiel passage. The whole scene permeated by the various activities of the ruach. Human, natural, divine, breath, wind, spirit, all with a single total effect of life. Life out of utter deadness. And then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. This is the Point in Israel's histories where they had been utterly destroyed. Her territory had been absorbed into the Babylonian Empire and her people dragged into foreign countries. All of this because God was fed up with their unceasing rebellion and their sin. He warned them for centuries to repent, but they just couldn't be bothered. And he predicted in great detail how terrible the result would be but they didn't repent. They just didn't listen. And now Ezekiel, stuck living as a slave in the city of Babylon, the capital of the empire that destroyed his nation. What Ezekiel couldn't know was that in 70 years, God would bring his people back to their homeland. However, this is more than just the fact that he'd bring them back to a land. It says, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. I will place you in your own land, and then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. He's declaring, I am God over life and death. I have the power to resurrect the dead. Our gospel reading is the story of Jesus raising Lazarus because Jesus, as God, has the power over life and death. But it's interesting. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the, bread, from the dead, it wasn't eternal life that was breathed into him. Lazarus would need his burial clothes again. But when Jesus rose from the dead, it was an eternal life rising, never needing those burial clothes ever again. And remember, he breathed his eternal spirit into the disciples. He breathed life at the day of Pentecost as the spirit entered. And it's the same spirit that is promised to us as eternal life is breathed into us that our souls shall never perish. Ephesians 2 says, but God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we are dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and, raises, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In our gospel text, before Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, he asks Martha a question. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Do you see the parallel when Yahweh asks Ezekiel if he believes that he can raise the dead to life? And in parallel, Jesus asks Martha the same thing, and she answers, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Jesus knew there was still hope. 
he went to Lazarus' tomb and called out, Lazarus, come out. And miraculously, he came back to life. Not a story of a miraculous healing, but a powerful lesson of true life that Jesus is the only giver of true life. The message translation of this verse says, you don't have to wait for the end. I am, right now, resurrection and life. The one who believes in me, even though he or she dies, will live. And everyone who lives believing in me does not ultimately die at all. Do you believe this? Let me ask you a question. Do you believe Jesus can raise you from the dead? Can he raise you out of your current situation you find yourself in? The Israelites cried out, our bones are dry, we have no hope. But they stayed in the valley of dry bones. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? How are you going to respond? Can God bring life in your valley of dry bones? Now I want you to gaze wider out amongst whom he is asking this question. Can these bones live? Is it you or is it someone else in your life that you think has walked so far away from God and is so spiritually dry that there's no hope for them? Yet what does God proclaim here when Israel says there's no hope for us? Who am I? May we believe the word of God can still bring life today. And pray what you think is impossible, Lord, make possible. I believe we can all relate to these readings in some way. We all have seasons where we feel like we're in this valley of dry bones where there's spiritual death. Maybe it's because a a situation we're in or just the wear and tear of exhaustion. But whatever the cause, sometimes we feel like we're just going through the motions with no sense of purpose or direction. But as Christians, we're called to believe in the power of God to bring life. We may face challenges and difficulties, and a human response might be just to fall over and play dead. But can we take heart in the knowledge that God is always with us? and has the power to bring new life even out of the most hopeless of situations. The story of Lazarus teaches us that we must have faith to receive this gift. When Jesus tells Martha, Lazarus will rise again, she replies, I know he will rise again at the last day, but Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live. It's only our faith in Jesus Christ that we receive this gift. But like Ezekiel, is there more? Where he says, testify. Is there more that we have to testify to our bones? Perhaps we have a little gastioporosis. Our spiritual bones have become a little too brittle. Going back to the introduction, you're not dead, nor do you need to play dead. Nor do you need to stay down out of fear. Say to yourself, dry bones, hear the word of God. Jesus lives. Get up and rise and come out of that tomb you're in. Will you bow your heads with me? Come from the four winds, O breath, O spirit, and breathe on these slain that they may live. May numbers unable to count turn to you in their times of darkness and find light and life. Pour out your Holy Spirit and spiritually resuscitate all believers as your church in this time that we find the strength to stand as an exceedingly great army. Lord, if you can rebuild from death to life, we know you can break down the hardest of hearts and rebuild them full of grace. We pray for all those who are losing hope that they may find it in you. Amen. In the valley of dry bones, we hold our stand. No sickness or death shall prevail God's land. 
The bones before us lie brittled with fear. Move breath, blow wind, draw your Holy Spirit near. May hearts be broken, bones unbroken, our mouths proclaiming power of your words spoken. Raise the dead to life, a vast army geared for war, to heal the heart sick, free the captives, and proclaim good news to the poor. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.